What's going on, Soul Nation? Ginger Prime here, and today I'm weighing in on a topic that was floated out by MTash talking about Destiny 2, the state of the game, why people aren't watching it. And honestly, let's just dive into the tweet and let's get into this conversation because I think it's really important. As a longtime Destiny 2 fan, Destiny fan, just overall, just somebody who really has enjoyed and loved this franchise, but also has a complex relationship with it. It's let me down more times than I care to, you know, kind of reflect on right now. But let's dive into the tweet. Let's get into this conversation. As always, I want to know your thoughts about the game, the state of the game in the comments below. Not trying to be rude or negative, but Destiny 2 below many games on Twitch that are much older slash limited updates. What makes Destiny 2 not very watchable right now for you? Favorite creators not playing, bored of the game, not fun to watch, etc. And they post up this picture, he posts up this picture showing Destiny 2 right now at 11.9k viewers. Obviously when he snapped the image, looking at it right now, uh, it looks like Destiny 2 is actually doing much better, 143 obviously compared to other games out there. You can see I follow a couple of games, wide range of viewership right now. But let's dive back into the tweet itself because I think it's more you know, really important to kind of focus in on it. Paris follows this up, says, not fun to watch right now, hard to get excited to watch trials with the new rampant cheating and no new raid or dungeon uh, to watch either. And kind of the crux of this, and because apparently this tweet is actually doing real well, apparently, I don't know. I don't get Twitter um, at the end of the day. Uh, I just tweeted this. My reply to this is that right now Destiny 2 is in the season of quote unquote bitch, uh, where most of what is being shared is not really, it's just complaining about the game. Next, they'll move on to the season of quote unquote hype as we gear up for the next big update. And then it's going to go back to the season of grind where it's going to be played heavily and then it's going to repeat. Uh, this uh, tweet shouldn't discount the issues. People complaining about, you know, cheating, people upset about trials, people upset about whatever. Um, I'm not discounting the game. The game always has needed work. This has been true since Destiny Year One, Destiny One Year One. And so it's on that topic that with Destiny, you don't see me covering it here on Ginger Prime that often. And there's a reason behind it. When I look at the game, uh, I, I really enjoy it, but, and I've said this before, I've said this publicly, I've tweeted this out. Destiny 2's seasonal model, its current model, uh, it's disincentivizing me to play. It, it has, hands down. What happens, and this is just the natural fact of life, if anybody out there is a parent or is considering becoming a parent, uh, you might relate to this or you might find this interesting, but when I fall behind in the game, when I fall behind in the season, for whatever reason, my, and this is a me thing, this isn't that everybody has to agree, this is a Brian thing, I get disincentivized to log in and continue to play. Now, I've enjoyed the PvP updates that came with Season of the Worthy. In fact, I played it a lot. I've, I think it racked up 1,500 kills before I ended up getting sick and wasn't able to play. And therein lies the rub. Why am I not actively playing Destiny 2 right now? Why is Gears 5 way more interesting to me right now? and Gears 5 has a seasonal model. Gears 5 immediately feels way more rewarding right off the bat. I can't explain it. I'm working on a review for this channel to explore its current state of the game because of the seasonal model it's brought in. Anyway, this is not a Gears video. So why am I not playing Destiny? Even though like friends have said, hey, you know, let me know when the next time you're gonna get on Destiny and play. And it's that weird disincentivation. I, I felt it in the, in the second season, season of the dawn. Um, and I felt that almost immediately because my son was born. And so I didn't get that much opportunity to play. And by the time I was able to I started looking at it and going, there's just no way I'm going to, I'm going to get to cap. And, and it's that it's that. And the fact is, is I know how to, to, to level up. I know how to grind. Uh, if I just put in the time and effort, I'm sure I could get to cap, but why? And it's that, but why is the true crux of it? Now I bring that up because that is my personal critique of the seasonal model uh, I that it that it is you know it's like they've they said they're going to make changes they said they're going to work on it and, and do this and so the point that I'm making here isn't about the current state of the game of Destiny 2 it's not about the issues that plague the community with cheating with like like lack of incentive and things like that all of those are valid my issue and my concern here obviously with the, the state of the concept of why aren't you watching this game why aren't people playing this game is that this is just the nature of these persistent games. You can change out Destiny 2 and put in another game. 
And some games do it better and some games do it differently. But there is this ebb and flow. And I've for a long time called this the <laughs> the pie or like the, the one-thirds content creation problem. You have the hype, you have the grind, and then you have the bitch. Uh, that is uh, the setting up of in thirds. And so I think a lot of what I see within the Destiny community and Destiny content creators, especially those who are live streaming it, who have that, this is their job, so to speak, as entertainers, content creators, influencers, whatever term you want to use for that section of the community. Uh, they're able to consume and burn out on the content very quickly. And so there isn't any way that the devs can really make enough content for them unless you start to blend in the concept of sandbox models. You look at Minecraft, you look at some of these sandbox s games, there's a lot of ways that you can make content around that. It's always interesting, it's changing, because the players aren't just the content creators, they're the game designers in a way. They The, the toolbox is set and etc. So Destiny, like other theme park-esque games, is going to always rely on a constant fed, uh, you know, feeding of content from the devs, the curated PVE style content. PVP comes into that sandbox element, and that's where I think when you see the fallings, the where it falls short with trials and where it falls short with, you know, like cheating and things like that, that disincentivizes people to play and engage in that content. Also, that not not having that thing to chase, and so you kind of lose that element. Which Destiny, I thought, you know, it sometimes in its in its life, its career as a game, uh, has balanced out. Fairly evenly. I, I'm always continually pulled into PvP. The other side of this is um, the concept of that people are frustrated or not watching, um, that they need to take breaks, and that ultimately um, this is just what's going to happen with the game. I think my, my whole point when it comes down to season of the bitch here, <laughs> uh, and maybe there'll be a better term that I can come up with this, maybe more YouTube friendly, but with that kind of that season, you have people who are entering the game at multiple different points, right? So I'm not a full-time content creator. I'm not a streamer. I'm not somebody who's always having to be live in order to provide for my family. That terrifies me. Anyway, that's just me. But as a, somebody who's coming into the game, when you see a community that's just, you know, they've, they've burned all the content, they've done all these things at a, at a pace that I can never keep up with, that the majority of the gamers, <laughs> gamers, excuse me, cannot keep up with, there's an it's inevitable that they're going to be frustrated. It's inevitable that there's going to be a disconnect in the community. So as somebody who consumes the content, I don't, I'm, I'm not necessarily looking for that, that content to watch right now. Like just people complain about, Oh, why that they don't have X, why they don't have Y and they don't have Z. And the fact is, is I would say probably that might even be a, a min, you know, minority or it might be a small piece of the overall content, but it comes up. And whenever I seem to get exposed to it, I'm not in alignment with that because if, if they're talking about the, the failings of the seasonal pass model, boom, I'm interested in that conversation to see where we align up, but I can only speak for myself. It gets overwhelmingly frustrating as somebody who is a content consumer, as somebody who's trying to engage and, and like get better and things like that, to, to have that overall negativity just posted and posted, especially with what's going on in society today. And there, there is that kind of contrast when we're all in alignment and we're all frustrated at something. Um, a negative video can be, you know, <laughs> it can congeal, like it brings us together as a community in one voice. And so all that being said, I know that that kind of bounced around a little bit. And I do apologize. Um, all that being said, when it comes down to Destiny 2 is, uh, and this applies to any other game, it's not about where the, the game is today. It's about where the game is going. And that's always the, the concept of a seasonal pass model. Uh, or a game that evolves a, a games as a service. Because with Destiny, the question is, does Bungie understand? Are they listening? Do they have the ability to make the changes? Uh, and then will they? You know, it, like, will it end up working? And sometimes it will and sometimes it won't. The problem with this is that gamers are very impatient and this isn't all done in a bubble. You know, there isn't just Destiny, you can only play this one game, there's only one channel. There's multiple channels, you can go play other things. And so within that bubble, Gamers are going to leave and they might not even say that they're frustrated. They're just going to go and they're going to go play something else. And um, that's actually, I think, a healthy thing for the individual, not necessarily for the game or the community, but just to go off and play something else. If Bungie isn't listening, if they aren't working hard to kind of figure out the issues and to develop them and communicate them, that's when the game has a real problem. That's hands down. It does not matter if Destiny has a bad season. If they put out something that doesn't work well. In fact, as as gamers, as players, we have more power than ever not to purchase said season and thus communicate to them financially our 
happiness or our dis, you know, our dis, <laughs> disgruntledness with the model itself. So we have more impact, more ways to actually communicate this to them in a meaningful degree. So that being said, is that the problem is, do they have the ability to turn it around quickly? And I don't think game development works that way. If it did, all of our dreams would always be <laughs> would be answered immediately. But I think the volume of the work, what they're working on with the next big update, which will draw us into the season and the hype, say, hey, they fixed all these things. Oh, maybe this is going to be it. They're going to solve all the problems with this game, and I'm never going to need to leave it. Because there's deep down, I think, a, a craving that each and every one of us have for something just to just sink our teeth into. We're just hungry for at least one 10 year game whether we spend 10 years with it or five years with it we're hungry for that that's what i see kind of the the, the root of the frustration that gamers have overall with the game itself is it's not keeping me entertained uh, long enough and then when people leave and you get frustrated you end up eventually getting burned out because playing a solo experience overall in a multiplayer world just isn't going to cut it in today's society so what is the point of this entire video? What is the point I am trying to make in summary when it comes down to it? Is that as gamers, we have the power, we have the responsibility to communicate to the devs what we want. As the developers Bungie, it's their job to make great updates, listen, adjust, fix. Uh, and the problem with the, the listening and the hearing is that sometimes we might think we want something um, but we're really asking for something else. This is a common problem within development outside of game development itself is that the client is asking for X, but if you listen to it, if you really understand it, they're actually asking for Y and they just don't know how to communicate that. So there's part of that is going to be an interpretation issue, but that all kinds of falls down into then the delivery, the season of grind. Season of grind is when this content's consumed and we have within society today, within this content creation loop today, um, a real interesting uh, problem we haven't had before. We have people who it's their livelihood is to consume the content, break it down and deliver it to other people for entertainment and education. So there's no way those people, and, and I'm not knocking them because I think, you know, obviously <laughs> there's a lot of money there. This is a legitimate career. You can't knock it for its the value it brings you can question it you can question the authenticity on on anyway you can <laughs> the authenticity of the the creator themselves but at the end of the day like this is a big industry and it's only getting bigger so those individuals it becomes interesting to see how then they relate to the normal everyday gamer and that's where the friction lies i think when it comes down to it from people not watching people not like in, you know enjoying that content is there's other things that are going on right now a, you might be quarantined. Uh, and thus, because of that, you have more time to play. Maybe yeah, that means you're watching less, or maybe that means you're trying to find a new job, you know, trying to find more hours, trying to figure out how to provide for your family. Uh, the other side of it is that, you know, if you've seen them do the same thing over and over again, uh, and then all it's going to be is negative, it's like, why even like engage in the content? Third thing is, is they probably, you know, when you're playing one game, and especially if your career, quote unquote, is tied into that game, major concerns I have for like, well, obviously the risk of moving on. Now there's interesting things that these, uh, these companies do. Like once you get into the top 100, you're pretty much set, but it's like winning the lottery at that point. Like you got to bring your A game uh, all the time. And anyway, that's probably another, another topic for another video, another coffee chat, if you will. And so ultimately I'm looking forward to destiny destiny. You know, when anybody's like, Oh, it's dying, it's dead. It's, you know, people are going to engage with that in different ways for like, I've always believed that games die all the time. When you look at it at that individual personal level, if you're not playing destiny, if it's frustrated you and it's caused you to leave the game and therefore it is dead to you. Who cares about the overall? Games never really die. And the best case and proof of that is private servers. People are working on a private server for Wildstar right now. You know, games never die because there is a passionate community always behind them. They're gonna grow, they're gonna shrink, and you're gonna have hype in which that it brings in a bigger community that's like, what's going on over here? But sometimes those communities just kind of move on. They kind of just bounce around from the next big hype game to the next big hype game. So. Anyhow, <laughs> um, that's a, just a long way of saying that you got to provide your feedback. This is this is Destiny at its at its core. This is games as a service, games as its core. Um, the the root of it is that anybody sitting here like yeah, if Bungie is able to listen 
and deliver great updates and content updates and 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 learn from the positives and the negatives uh, the game's only going to get better and people are going to come back and they're going to be happy with it uh, but it's important as gamers that if the game isn't making you happy yet you take a daggum break yet you, you step away from the game because no game's worth hating, no game's worth getting so frustrated at that you swear it off forever. At that point, that's the that's the heartbreak. That's the real loss. That's the that's the real death. When you say I'm never going to play this game again, and there's nothing they could do to get you back. And ideally, that's something that you as an individual gamer has to look at yourself and figure out what makes the most sense for you. If you start feeling that burn, if you're not interested in watching it, by all means, that's fine. Hopefully, my hope is, is that you can be a part of an overall bigger, great gaming community. So just for the fact that you aren't playing Destiny, you're, maybe that's your social outlet. Like if you were to go to a bar or something, like that's your social outlet. Gaming for me is a 100% social outlet. So all that being said, hopefully you're able to contain, continue to maintain those relationships with your community uh, because that's what's really important, I think, and that's the real, the real thing of it. Um, hopefully the game's working out well for you. Uh, I expressed my issues and why I'm not playing it right now. Uh, I love it. I love the PVP like destiny continues to bring me in. Um, and it brings me in for a little bit. And, uh, in the past it brought me in and I would stay around for a long time. Season model isn't cutting it for me. Um, and maybe it is cutting it for you. And I'm not saying that they can't have a battle pass style model overall as a part of the content in the game, but the, the current model just, it just makes me go play other games and I'm loving those other games. And that's great because it means I can come up with some new reviews and maybe do a couple different videos here on, on the channel. I like kind of being a little bit free to, to create what I want and not being worried about the numbers because <laughs> I'm not a full-time creator here. So anyhow, uh, those are my thoughts as always with these, with these uh, coffee chats. I'd love to know yours. I really hope that you sound off in the comments below. I look forward to, to hearing from you, what you think, what you're feeling, Destiny, uh, games as a service related, anything that I rambled on about here for far too long. But if you're here with me, thanks for sticking around. If you're new here, you feel like we earned your subscription, hit the subscribe button, come back for more videos. Um, but only, only if we've earned it. If you're a returning subscriber, well, you know what? You are my guardian. Uh, <laughs> you will always be my guardian. Thank you very much for your service. Uh, <laughs> um, Brian out on that regards. Anyway, free compliments for uh, returning subscribers only. But anyway, uh, with that, I'm going to wrap up this video. Thank you for watching. Hope you guys have an incredible day. Look forward to talking to you in my next video. But until then, take care.